Folklore and Legend Scandinavian by Charles John Tibbets The Death of Baldur Baldur the Good had dreams which forewarned him that his life was in danger, and he told the gods of them. The gods took counsel together what should be done, and it was agreed that they should conjure away all danger that might threaten him. Frigga took an oath of fire, water, iron, and all other metals, stones, earth, trees, sicknesses, beasts, birds, poisons, and worms, that these would none of them hurt Baldur. When this had been done, the gods used to divert themselves. Baldur, standing up in the assembly, and all the others throwing at him, hewing at him, and smiting him with stones, for, do all they would, he received no hurt. And in this sport, all enjoyed themselves. Loki, however, looked on with envy when he saw that Baldur was not hurt. So he assumed the form of a woman, and set out to Fenseler, to Frigga. Frigga asked if the stranger knew what the gods did when they met. He answered that they all shot at Baldur, and he was not hurt. No weapon nor tree may hurt Baldur, answers Frigga. I have taken an oath of them all not to do so. What? said the pretended woman. Have all these things sworn to spare Baldur? There is only one little twig which grows to the east of Valhalla, which is called mistletoe. Of that I took no oath, for it seemed to me too young and feeble to do any hurt. Then the strange woman departed, and Loki, having found the mistletoe, cut it off and went to the assembly. There he found Hador standing apart by himself, for he was blind. Then said Loki to him, Why do you not throw at Baldur? Because, said he, I am blind and I cannot see, and besides, I have nothing to throw. Do as the others, said Loki, and honor Baldur as the rest do. I will direct your aim. Throw the shaft at him. Hodor took the mistletoe, and, Loki directing him, aimed at Baldur. The aim was good. The shaft pierced him through, and Baldur fell dead upon the earth. Surely never was there a greater misfortune either among gods or men. When the gods saw that Baldur was dead, then they were silent, aghast, and stood motionless. They looked on one another, and were all agreed as to what he deserved who had done the deed. But out of respect to the place, none dared to avenge Baldur's death. They broke the silence at length with wailing, words failing them with which to express their sorrow. Odin, as was right, was more sorrowful than any of the others, for he best knew what a loss the gods had sustained. At last, when the gods had recovered themselves, Frigga asked, Who is there among the gods who will win my love and goodwill? That shall he have if he will ride to Hel and seek Baldur, and offer Hela a reward if she will let Baldur come home to Asgard. Hermod the nimble, Odin's lad, said he would make the journey. So he mounted Odin's horse, Sleipnir, and went his way. The gods took Baldur's body down to the seashore where stood Ringhorn, Baldur's vessel, the biggest in the world. When the gods tried to launch it into the water, in order to make on it a funeral fire for Baldur, the ship would not stir. Then they dispatched one to Jotunheim, for the sorceress called Hiroken, who came riding on a wolf with twisted serpents by way of reins. Odin called for four berserker to hold the horse, but they could not secure it till they had thrown it to the ground. Then Hiroken went to the stem of the ship and set it afloat with a single touch, the vessel going so fast that fire sprang from the rollers, and the earth trembled. Then Thor was so angry that he took his hammer and wanted to cast it at the woman's head. But the gods pleaded for her and appeased him. The body of Baldur being placed on the ship, Nana, the daughter of Nep, Baldur's wife, seeing it, died of a broken heart. So she was borne to the pile and thrown into the fire. Thor stood up and consecrated the pile with Mjolnir. A little dwarf called Litur ran before his feet, and Thor gave him a push and threw him into the fire, and he was burnt. Many kinds of people came to this ceremony. With Odin came Frigga and the Valkyr with his ravens. Frey drove in a car drawn by the boar, Gulenbursti or Slegoratoni. Heimdall rode his horse Gultop, and Freya drove her cats. There were also many of the forest giants and mountain giants there. On the pile Odin laid the gold ring called Dropnir. 
giving it the property that every ninth night it produces eight rings of equal weight. In the same pile was also consumed Baldur's horse. For nine nights and days Hermod rode through the deep valleys, so dark that he could see nothing. Then he came to the river Gil, which he crossed by the bridge, which was covered with shining gold. The maid who keeps the bridge is called Mudgudur. She asked Hamad his name and family, and told him that on the former day there had ridden over the bridge five bands of dead men. They did not make my bridge ring as you do, and you do not have the hue of the dead. Why ride you thus on the way to hell? I ride to hell to find Baldur. Have you seen him on his way to this place? Baldur, answered she, has passed over the bridge, but the way to hell is below to the north. Hermod rode till he came to the entrance of hell, which was guarded by a grate. He dismounted, looked at the girths of his saddle, mounted, and clapping his spurs into the horse, cleared the grate easily. Then he rode on to the hall and, dismounting, entered it. There he saw his brother, Baldur, seated in the first place, and there Hermod stopped for the night. In the morning he saw Hela, and begged her to let Baldur ride home with him, telling her how much the gods had sorrowed over his death. Hela told him she would test whether it were true that Baldur was so much loved. If, said she, all things weep for him, then he shall return to the gods. But if any speak against him or refuse to weep, then he shall remain in hell. Then Hermod rose to go, and Baldur, leading him out of the hall, gave him the ring at Dropner which he wished Odin to have as a keepsake. Nana also sent Frigga a present, and a ring to Fulla. Hermod rode back, and coming to Asgard, related all he had seen and heard. Then the gods sent messengers all over the world seeking to get Baldur brought back again by weeping. All wept, men and living things, earth, stones, trees, and metals, all weeping as they do when they are subjected to heat after frost. Then the messengers came back again, thinking they had done their errand well. On their way they had came to a cave wherein sat a hag named Thokt. The messengers prayed her to assist in weeping Baldur out of hell. I will weep dry tears, answered she, over Baldur's pyre. What gain I by son of man, be he live or dead? Let Hela hold what she has. It was thought that this must have been Loki, Lofi's son, he who has ever wrought such harm to the gods. <laughs> 